and welcome to The Art of Being Human. Now, on the last segment, we talked about the fact that women stop drinking when they're pregnant, and they need to because the baby gets the, the alcohol in their system. But what I was reminded of, and I hadn't thought to mention it, but it makes perfect sense, even after the baby is born, you still can't drink. And the reason is, if you're breastfeeding, then the baby's still going to get alcohol in their system because they're getting it through the breast milk. So as long as a woman is breastfeeding, she can't drink. As, uh, she can't drink through her pregnancy because it's dangerous for the baby. She also cannot drink as long as she is breastfeeding. And if you are a breastfeeding mother, you know that's going to take months. You know, your baby is breastfeeding until they're ready to be weaned. And and that can be a series of months. So it means a long time without drinking. So you just need to remember that stopping drinking during the pregnancy is not enough. You have to continue to stop it. And of course, I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage anyone to drink anyway because of, the system, of what it does to the system. The other thing I want to mention to you, and I haven't mentioned it much before, but supposing you have stopped drinking and you have gone like for 20 years without drinking. So basically, you are still a recovering alcoholic. You know, you haven't stopped being an alcoholic, but you're a recovering alcoholic because you're not actually drinking. So you're sober all the time. Supposing you go back to drinking on that first drink that you take, figuring that it's safe because you have been without alcohol all these years, that one drink puts you right back into alcoholism again. It's as if you never stopped drinking. And the unusual thing about it is that your body suddenly deteriorates as fast as it would if you had been drinking all of those years that you weren't drinking. For some reason, that one drink puts you right back into the alcoholism. The body deteriorates so fast, it's as if you never stopped drinking, even though you were sober for 20 years. I don't, have not read any explanation as to why that happens. But once you stop drinking, if you start it again, it's game over and you have to start from square one all over again. And it's hard to get off from it. It's very difficult to get off from it. So you need to remember that. Now, alcoholics' effects on the body, I've already mentioned in the last segment that it depresses the central nervous system, and 20% of what you drink absorbs directly from the stomach into the bloodstream without any digestion. It is a food because it has calories, but it has no nutritional value. And when you drink, 20% of it is right in the bloodstream. Now, uh, it doesn't have to be digested. So that's what slows the brain down. The brain depresses and the brain slows down. The same thing happens to marijuana in marijuana. I've heard so many people say that, you know, in terms of marijuana or alcohol, uh, that marijuana is safer, but marijuana also depresses the nervous system, and alcohol does it too. Heroin goes a step further. It actually shrinks the size of the brain. Those hard, hard drugs will change the brain size and damage the brain. It's all not very good. Now, moments after alcohol is consumed, it can be found in every tissue of the body and all the secretions of the body. I want to repeat that. Moments after alcohol is consumed, its effects are so immediate that as soon as you drink alcohol, the, la the first few seconds, it's already in every system in your body. It absorbs into the bloodstream and damages the body that fast. At low doses, it produces relaxation, a loss of inhibition, a lack of concentration, drowsiness, slurred speech, and disturbed sleep. Now, chronic use of alcohol will cause the following conditions. I'm going to give you a list of names of these various conditions, which you probably won't understand, but then I'm going to go and describe what it means. So right now, I'm just giving you a list of the medical conditions that result from drinking. You can get peripheral neuropathy, alcoholic myopathy, Wernicke's encephalopathy, 
Korsakov psychosis, alcoholic cardiomyopathy, uh, esophagitis, gastritis, pancreatitis, alcoholic hepatitis, and cirrhosis of the liver. Now, that's quite a list, but I'm going to define it for you because you probably don't know what all of those terms mean. Peripheral neuropathy is nerve damage in the hands and feet. Diabetics get it. They don't have to be drinkers. I have it, and I'm not a drinker at all. So it's not, drinking is not the only way that you can get peripheral neuropathy. In neuropathy, there is nerve damage, and the periphery would be the parts of the body that's furthest from the heart. That would be your hands and your feet. That's the periphery of your body. So peripheral neuropathy is is nerve damage in your hands and as your feet in your feet. And the symptoms of that are pain, burning, tingling, and prickly sensations. I used to tell my foot doctor it's kind of halfway between an itch and a burn. And you can't, you know, it grips you, and you can't scratch it away. You try to. You have to scratch something, because if you have a terrible itch, it's like you can't keep your hands off from it. But this is a deeper thing, because it involves pain sensations, and it involves prickly sensations. And you know if you have it, because it's not the exact same thing as an itch, and it's not just the pain. It involves a lot of other symptoms along with it. So pain pain, burning, tingling, prickly sensations, and a lot of that is due to a lack of vitamin B. If you're drinking a lot, it, it destroys your vitamin B, and if you don't restore your vitamin D B and take the vitamins that you need, then you're going to have symptoms. Alcoholics, as you know, many times will drink rather than eat. They drink more than anything. Now, the alcoholic myopathy is muscle pain and swelling and weakness. And it's, uh, there's also a reddish color to the urine. If a person had a reddish color to the urine, it's due to the fact that their muscles are being beginning to waste away. As I said before, m uh, many alcoholics will drink rather than eat, but their muscles are wasting away. It's a effect of, of alcoholism, and they, do not, uh, and they do not do well with that. And also, partly due to a vitamin B deficiency, you'll find as I talk about these uh, conditions that you get from alcohol uh, abuse, that a lot of them have to do with the deficiency of vitamins, particularly vitamin B. Now, Wernicke's encephalopathy, I'll spell this. It's W-E-R-N-I-C-K-E apostrophe S for work, uh, Wernicke's, and then encephalopathy is spelled E-N-C-E-P-H-A-L-O-P-H-Y. Wernicke's encephalopathy, it's extreme vitamin B deficiency. And what happens with it is the eye muscles become paralyzed, you become in a stupor, you sleep, you know, you're kind of not there anymore. And if you have it, you can die quickly from it, especially if it's not treated with vitamin B because you have to have that vitamin B and, and you destroy it with the drinking. So therefore, death can come quickly if it's not treated. Wernicke's encephalopathy. Then there's Korsakoff psychosis. I, I will spell this as well. Korsakoff, K-O-R-S-A-K-O-F-F, -F, apostrophe S, and psychosis, P-S-Y-C-H-O-S-I-S. -S. Korsakoff psychosis, and it is confusion, memory loss, confabulation. Now, confabulation is when, you, when a person is talking, but they're making up what they're talking about. If you hear a person confabulate, and there are various mental illnesses in which patients do that, it's not just from alcoholism. Some people confabulate with different mental illnesses. If you don't know them, you can talk to them, and it sounds very reasonable. They're using the English language, the sentence structure is normal, it sounds like it's perfectly normal, but everything they're telling you is made up. Part of it is if they have memory loss, 
and they don't know what they're talking about, but they're trying to fill the memory loss, they stop making up things and talking about things. And on the surface, it sounds good because on the surface, they're using correct English. It's not like they're just blabbering or something like that, but they are talking regular English. But the problem is everything they're telling you isn't true because it's all made up. And sometimes it's an attempt to fill a memory void that they have due to what their mental illness is. So they make things up. But that confabulation is also common in Wernicke's encephalopathy. So you get it in both conditions. And so it can be treated, however, sometimes with thiamine, which, as you know, is one of the B vitamins. Now you have cardi uh, alcoholic cardiomyopathy. Now, in this case, the, the heart enlarges and it becomes weak. Now, there are some people who have heart conditions and their heart does enlarge and become weak. But in this card alcoholic cardiomyopathy, it's because of the drinking that's causing it. Other people may have it due to other reasons. So the heart enlarges, the heart is weak, and you get congestive heart failure, which is a killer the heart, the lungs fill with fluids, and a person can, can drown in their own fluids and die that way. You also can have heart arrhythmia, where the, the uh, heartbeat is not right. You know, it's just a flurry of activity and then hardly none. The arrhythmias is very serious. You can die from heart arrhythmias. Tachycardia is when your heartbeat is not steady. It can be fast, it can be slow, but it's not right. And, and you can die from that if you have it bad enough. Edema, which is swelling and palpitation. So let me just read that again. Alcoholic cardiomyopathy, in which the heart enlarges and the heart weakens. You get congestive heart failure, heart arrhythmia, tachycardia, edema, which is swelling, and palpitations, where your heart is pounding. Those are the palpitations. Now, the only way that you can get help with this and to be treated from this is to have total permanent abstinence from drinking. No alcohol, no drinking, just not at all. It is treatable in the early stages, but of course as you get along and you don't have uh, treatment for it, it causes death. Esophagitis is inflammation and pain in the esophagus due to the toxic effects of alcohol and vomiting. You know, they say people who have problems with their digestive system and they burp a lot, they can have real serious uh, problems with the esophagus. They can actually burn. The, the stomach is full of acid. It's normal to be full of acid. And if you have excessive burping, and you know, like you would get in, in the uh, uh, acid reflux conditions, what you do is burn your esophagus. It really does happen. So you have inflammation and pain in the esophagus due to alcohol and due to vomiting because that does damage. People, you know, who make themselves thin, they don't want to eat anything and they become like really thin and they vomit in eating disorders, they can really damage their esophagus and it burns. The, the uh, acidic nature of the stomach, if you're bringing up gas or if you're bringing up, say, you're vomiting, uh, it, it brings up a lot of acids and at the same time you're actually burning your esophagus. It's, it's a very difficult thing to go through. Gastritis is the next one. It's inflammation of the stomach lining. And the inflammation of the stomach lining will cause nausea and vomiting. And the stomach coating is eroded. And the stomach is, is eroded by hydrochloric acid. You do have those acids in the stomach, as I said before. And the blood vessels can be damaged, and you can start getting hemorrhages from it. So that's gastritis. None of this sounds very pleasant, does it? Pancreatitis is pain nausea, vomiting, and distension. Distension is when you have a lot of gas so your stomach kind of sticks out because of the gas. And uh, it can cause malnutrition, weight loss, 
diabetes, and it can be acute or chronic. So if you start drinking, you have to think not only of what you're doing to the rest of the body and what the brain and the things that happen to the brain, but the rest of the body is also affected. I read a book once. I wished I could find it. I don't know where it is now, but it talked about an alcoholic who was in such serious conditions that all of the organs were porous that if he ate anything or drank anything, it went through little tiny holes in the organs in his body because they were porous. They couldn't hold anything in. And of course, shortly after that, he died. I didn't realize that could happen, but I read a whole book on it, so evidently it does. Then you have alcoholic hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver. And the liver is enlarged and tender, and the symptoms are going to be nausea, vomiting, lethargy, anorexia, high white blood count, <clears throat> fever, and jaundice. Very serious. And then you have cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver. This is end stage liver disease. If it's end stage, that's the last stage. And the liver, if it's going to fail, fails in stages. And so when it gets to the end stage, that's the last stage before it completely stays, uh, before it completely fails. And the liver cells are destroyed and they're replaced with fibrous scar tissue. So there's no way the liver is going to function normally. And if you don't have a normal liver, then you can't live. The symptoms would be nausea, vomiting, anorexia, weight loss, pain, jaundice, edema, anemia, abnormal blood coagulation. Then you have uh, alcohol intoxication, and that's losing the inhibitions and becoming aggressive because of intoxication. And the symptoms of intoxication would include mood lability. Lability means that you're all over the place. You're up, you're down, you're emotional, you're too quiet. It's lability, mood lability, impaired judgment, impaired social functioning, impaired work functioning, slurred speech, uncoordination, unsteady gait, nystagmus, which is a fluttering of the eyelids, and a flushed face in which your face is very like reddish and so forth. The blood levels of intoxication can be 100 to 200 milligrams, and 400 to 700 milligrams will cause death. So it's a downhill, it's a downhill uh, process. Uh, I'm going to, I think I'll close it here because I do have a little more to do, alcoholic withdrawal and what happens in withdrawal and how you withdraw from it. So that's going to take more time than what I have available to really get into it. So I'll close it here and we'll finish with this next time and uh, how to handle alcoholism, what you can do to help yourself, how to get over it, how to reclaim yourself as a human being and not be stuck in this awful Awful illness and we'll get into the question also is it an illness is drug addiction an illness a character flaw bad behavior exactly what is it how can it be defined and so I'm going to continue and we'll finish with this next time and then be on to something else so please join me next time